Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome back to another Sparking 160 EN podcast. This is podcast number 58. Um, and we got a good one as always. So uh, let me go straight to the panel, starting off with my boy Steph. How are you doing, bro? I'm doing good. Um, actually, um, we haven't done the podcast in a little bit, like a week or so. Last time, yeah, yeah it was you and Chris. Uh, <laughs> I couldn't make it. I took my father to the airport in Philly, and then it was a, a mess. But, uh, yeah, I feel good. Let's talk about it. We have some uh, some good stuff going on from uh, the Mudali Lads. Uh, so I'm excited. Yeah, I agree. And the, the, the soccer team also won, which is uh, pleasant, uh, a pleasantry nowadays. Uh, and anyways, let me also pass off to my boy Christian. What's up, bro? Doing all right myself. Uh, happy to be here with these guys, as always. Yeah, and um, sorry in advance, guys, for those listening. My voice might not be uh, 100%, but, you know, your boy was out here living life last night. <laughs> um, anyways, we're going to start something new this week. We're going to start straight with your, with your Twitter questions. Um, we only have one this week. Uh, from our boy David Claudio at David Strife 35. Uh, and he asks, um, who do you think is our worst player? Do you like Rodrigo Fernandes? And one last thing, you guys are the best. It's a pleasure to hear this podcast. Keep up the good work as always. Saudações, Leoninos. Thanks, David. Appreciate you listening. And we appreciate the kind words. Um, I'll pass off the first one to Steph and then the second question to Christian. Uh, Steph, who do you think our worst player is? Well, the, the question is that it would be easier if it was the best player because we have so many <laughs> worst players. Yeah. So it's kind of difficult just to narrow it down to one player because we have so many bad players that I've said before they wouldn't even make the team Nuga Fania, uh, the my home team in Portugal, so of Stalag. Uh, I'm not going to say one name. I'm just going to say this team is good enough for third third position, fourth or fifth, like you guys talked about last po- podcast. Uh, and that's what we're going to finish, around third, fourth, or fifth. Uh, but we have a lot of bad players that don't belong in uh, Sporting. But we don't have no money, and that's all we can buy. And now uh, we stuck with this shitty team. Yeah, agreed. Um, and our president doesn't help when he brings in some, some awful players as well. Um, next question, Christian. Uh, do you like Rodrigo Fernandes? Uh, yeah, I definitely like him. I thought he was pretty poor in the bull in this game. Uh, but he got the chance to start, um, you know, which I definitely thought was good. I'd welcome that seeing anyone new get some time. But, yeah, he only lasted a half. Didn't have a great game, but overall, I mean, I've seen, I've seen enough to think he's all right. Yeah, I think he brings I'm something with different you. than doing awesome. BHS. Yeah, agreed, agreed. And it also helps he's also an academy boy, so uh, younger. Hopefully, we'll understand the team a bit more. Um, so yeah, uh, thanks, David, for your question, uh, guys, the listeners, I should say. I think you guys are uh, slacking a little bit on the uh, on the questions. I'm calling you guys out. So uh, hopefully by next podcast we have a we have a more questions, more variety of questions from different people. Um, and yeah, don't forget to get out us on uh, Sporting160 underscore yen on Twitter. Anyways, let's move on to the Billinist game or the Billinist Sad game. Sporting played at home, uh, where we won two nothing. Our starting eleven was Rene Ribeiro and that. Luis Neto, Seba uh, Quach, and Tiago Ilari in defense. Uh, Rosier Borja uh, on, the full, or on the flanks with Bruno Fernandes, Eduardo Ilic, and uh, Rodrigo Fernandes in the midfield with Vieto and Balassi up top. We had an interesting rotation. We had Camacho coming in in the 30th minute, Dumbia coming in just after halftime, and then Luis Felipe also coming in on the 66th minute. Uh, Steph, I'll pass it off to you first, dude. What, what were your thoughts on the game? Well, the the, the first half, Bilnis played much better. We we didn't even show up to uh, to the first half. We gave them a bonus of forty five minutes. We we were non existent. The midfield couldn't connect with the uh, the last third of uh, of our team. 
Um, there, there were no chemistry whatsoever. Um, Belenz had a, uh, uh, they study our team pretty well. Uh, they they played on a on a four three three, and um, we we played we played t- terrible horrible in the first half. Then um, Silas noticed that, and uh, <clears throat> he did change uh, a few players, and and tac- tactically he also changed the team uh, to a three four three. Uh, Bruno Fernandes playing number eight, and. Um, um, and then we played better, but we won the game not in a playing like a team, more of uh, inspiration from Luciano Vieto. He scored two goals, um, but we, we're not playing as a team. I mean, I would, lo- I would love to say that Sporting is clicking and it's getting better and better. Um, we might see one like awesome play, but the lack of consistency. We, we're not consistent whatsoever. I still have to see a full game, a full 90 minute of consistency playing well the whole game. I mean, granted, you know, our opponents, of course, they will, they, they will, uh, you know, create chances of goal that's expected. That's why it's a football game. Uh, but we, we, we are terrible as a team. We, we just don't know how to play as a team. And it shows, it showed against Polnens. Uh, we won, which the most important thing was the three points. But but playing like this, we we can only we can we can only aim for the third place. Um, which uh, you know, Family Gown is nice and steady, and uh, they tied three three amazingly after being they they were winning three nothing, and they let they lost two points. That that's uh, just just uh, a little bit of luck for Sporting, but. If we continue to play this way, and I don't know what to say because or what to do, we're waiting for January, but we still have the whole month of December to make some adjustments uh, because the team we have in place now is literally terrible. Uh, blaming the coach is kind of stupid. It's not his fault he didn't pick the team. It takes time to build a team, the chemistry, your to, to transmit your ideas, how you want your players to play. I don't, I don't, I don't think some players are listening to him to tell the truth. And um, I was impressed with Kamashu. Don't get me wrong. Uh, I think he uh, he was a good addition, a, a breath of uh, fresh fresh air into the team. Um, but um, Dumbia also came in into the game and he. he he uh, did make the team play better. But besides that, man, I don't know. Uh, let's see if uh, this little break, because of the national team, he had time to prepare the team better. Uh, so let's see the next game, which will be against uh, PSV Eindhoven, I believe, on the 19th at home, which we need to win. Um, so we'll see. We'll see what's going to happen. But the team has to get better, much better, much better. Because so far, the lack of consistency, like we say in the Portuguese area, uh, area é gritante. That's all. Yep. Yeah, I agree 100% with you. Um, Christian, what were your thoughts on the game? Yeah, I mean, I, I thought that the first half was definitely poor. Um, it just the first like 20 minutes in general was horrible. We really couldn't even string together a couple passes, couldn't get anything going. It was just noticeably sloppy and ugly and hated watching it, but I, it got, it got better a little bit. Um, I, it was awesome to see Kamashu out there. Not, not only is he would just like just date different for the sake of seeing a different player, but I actually thought he was really active, really um, making things happen. He seemed like quick and athletic. I really liked what I saw, and I hope he keeps playing more. And I'm not really sure why he hasn't played at all up until this point. If he had this to, to, to you know give. So that was good. Um, bit disappointed in Rodrigo Fernandes also got a chance to play. Um, I think it begs the question to officially ask, uh, where the fuck is Bataglia? Uh, is he hurt? Is he hurt? How badly is he hurt? Is he ever going to play for sporting again? What What's the deal with that? But 
in the meantime, I do welcome mixing it up in the in the defensive mid spot because I mean I did think that when Dubia came in, like Steph said, he did play well and and did make the team play better. But I mean his performance has been pretty inconsistent recently, and he's been pretty poor in a couple games prior to this one. So I I mean I'm not opposed to switching him out, but I was disappointed that Rodrigo Fernandez didn't really make more of his opportunity and and play a bit better. Um, but still good to see that he was at least, you know, getting a chance. Um, yeah, I mean, good to see Vieto score goals. Um, the first one was beautiful. Really a great finish. Um, and, yeah, I mean, that's really all I got. This game was uh, nothing, you know, too, too crazy. Um, we played well in the second half, and uh, that was enough to, to get the job done. Bowman's really didn't create enough to, you know, justify anything. He didn't really have a, I mean, they had, like, work shots, and they didn't create enough to, to get a deserved result or anything. Uh, yeah, agreed. Um, I'll just bring up a few of the stats real quick before asking you guys some questions about the game. Um, the game basically ended 50-50 in possession. Uh, Spartan won... Uh, more percent and more um, duels. Sorry, I'm trying to translate in my head right now. Just they won 10% more duels, winning 55% of their uh, duels compared to uh, Billings 44. Uh, let's see, anything else of significance? Sparking was only offside one time uh, this game compared to Billings 4, which is, I think, something positive because I think Sparking, uh, especially this season, has been caught offside quite a few times. Um, but anyways, let me let me go through uh, the game real quick and ask you guys some questions. Steph, starting off with you, um, quite crazy to see a thirty minute change, thirtieth minute change. Um, do you think Celius was right in doing it? Um, obviously, you know, taking away from from the perf- or taking away from the performance of the second half, and obviously we can speak in hindsight because we know how the game finished. But at the time we were watching the game, did you think that? Um, the, the change in the 30th minute with Netu for Kamashu was necessary, or did you think he might have been ruining it a bit by by doing it, a, uh, doing such a such a substitution so early? No, I think uh, I think he was right on. Uh, he, he needed to do something because the team playing at home, uh, we we looked like um, uh, a, a third division team, and uh, Kamashu actually made quite a bit of a difference as soon uh, as soon as he came into the pitch yeah uh, he he made the uh he stretched the uh the the, the, the pitch and then uh, he made the, the the team play faster and he gave us more options more crosses more dribbling um putting bullness uh um against their back all the way into their box so that he was right on into into that so um and and that's and that's the thing. We we do have amazing players, uh, or better players than he's choosing. Uh, why not play them? I, I'm not getting it. So, for 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 that substitution, he was right on. But we we also have uh, Uplata. Uh, why not play the the Umiudu? I mean, he's pretty good. Everybody agrees that he's a great winger. Um, if he wants to break him in. Okay, let let him have some minutes because Rafael Camacho paid off. So he was right on on that. I totally agree with Silas. That's it. So, yeah, fair enough. Uh, I agree, and I'll bring up even another name uh, because Christian also earlier mentioned Bataglia and what's happening with him. Uh, nothing has been said about uh, Jovan as of late either. I know he had that disciplinary action because he got caught driving without a license or something like that. Um, but, I mean, it's been over a month now and no news of Jovan. At least if, at least play him in the, in the under-23s, you know? No, he's been, um, anyways, he's, been, was... he's, been, he's been hurt, I believe. Yeah, yeah, but that's what they say. I don't really believe it because oh, okay. that injury came out at the same time he got... Um, he got caught driving without a license or something. So you, maybe he is injured. But the way I was thinking, I was thinking maybe the injury is just an excuse to sort of avoid questions from journalists and stuff like that. In my, in my, in my opinion, at least. Okay, uh, maybe ma- hey, maybe you maybe you're right on. Maybe you're right on that. I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah. 
But sometimes you do have to protect your players, so. For um, sure. Yeah. Yeah, if he is injured, then fair enough, but uh, I'm not too sure. Um, anyways, going back to that substitution, we've we seen us go uh, from a three at the back to a four. Uh, Christian, do you think we should throw out three at the back? Um, seeing as it has resulted in a few games, but more often than not, we've had to change uh, shape a few times. Or do you think uh, three at the back just needs a little more fine-tuning or needs a little bit more work or even more quality players in, in, in certain positions? Yeah, I, I mean, it definitely sucks when one of the center backs is Ilori. But I think that if you have Matthews, Kowats, and that Neto, that's actually a pretty solid back three. Uh, and I think Rozier and Acuna, or even Borja sometimes, are pretty well positioned to play the, the wing back spot. So, I, I mean, sometimes I like the three at the back. Um, we played it against uh, Rosenberg, and it worked pretty well. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't, I truthfully don't mind the three at the back. I, I kind of like it when we play it. <laughs> I, yeah, I do too. Uh, oh, sorry. Never mind. I wasn't muted. Yeah, I do too. Uh, mainly because it complements the <laughs> fullbacks. I think Aquinha isn't uh, an out and out left back. He's definitely a left wing back. Uh, and Rosier the same. Um, their, their strong suits are more attacking wise rather than defensively. And I think playing three at the back um, definitely. Gives them that that opportunity to push more forward, or at least start in a higher position on the field. Um, going back to Ilotti, uh, Steph, I'll I'll pass this one off to you because Ilotti did have a, an incredible tackle on in the fifty fourth, fifty fifth minute, I believe, uh, against Bolinis. Um, that could have stopped a, a, a very important breakaway. Do you think uh, maybe Ilotti is starting to find his own, or or he's starting to uh, you know improve quality wise, or do you think? One tackle or one bit of uh, good play every now and again doesn't warrant uh, one a spot on the team or, or whatever we pay for him. What are your overall thoughts so far on, on Ilotti's season? Well, well let, let's get something out of the way. Um, Lodi could have an amazing season. I don't think he'll ever be welcome in, in Sporting. Uh, the way he left Sporting, uh, mo- most Sporting you should still remember. You might have... Uh, a good amount of Sporting that, that they have uh, forgave him and because he pushed his way out. He basically said, I want to get out. Uh, if, if, you, if you don't let me out, I won't play no more. I'll just, you know, collect my paycheck, you know, reading between the lines anyway. So from the get-go, it's going to be really difficult for uh, Ilari to, uh, to tr- triumph at Sporting. Um, this, this game, he, he did play well. Um, if he shows more consistency, um, I think most Portuguese will just, you know, give him compliments and kudos, saying, saying hey, you know what, he played, played great. But he'll never be uh, a player that uh, he'll conquer the Portuguese. He'll never be someone that we trust, uh, someone that will be loved. Be beloved. Um, he'll just be a player that, hey, do, you, do your job, play well. And uh, we'll um, we'll we'll deal with you that way as a player, but I hope he he's more consistent. If he shows more consistency, then obviously Silas will uh, will bet on him. If he doesn't show consistency, then I would welcome even Ed Fernandes in January, and mm-hmm. try try to ship him out to another club. To tell the truth, it's too much pressure on uh, Ilori. Uh, his best choice would be to. To ask to to be sold to another team, he's not he's never going to triumph at Sporting because we we just don't forget how he left Sporting. We still consider him a traitor, and it's he's always going to have a difficult time adjusting to the reality of the club, and uh, and that's 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 my take on it. I mean, if you come to a team and you know from the get go that the, the fan base doesn't like you, me personally, I would want to get out. I wouldn't want to stay. Yeah. I think uh, I agree 100%. I think the only way Lodi ever leaves the situation in a good light, I think, one, it's too late. But it's, it's, it's more uh, if he's, like, really world-class. Um, like Bruno Fernandes, for example. Like, obviously, a lot of Spartan users might still dislike him, but uh, a lot of us are super happy he's still on the team. I mean, he's our best player, right? Uh, and he did rescind his contract against us. So I think Lodi's only hope would be... Um, 
yeah, being a, a world class player, which clearly he isn't. Um, and unless he has some sort of crazy um, improvement at, at in his late twenties, uh, that yeah, I doubt that'll ever happen. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, also, back onto the game, um, Balassi, uh with a great assist to Viato's first goal, or sorry, to his her second goal. Uh, the first goal sort of came from a ball in the box from Balassi, deflected off a, uh, I want to say, a Bruno Fernandes shot. And then, of course, Viatu with great technique to score it. But on the second goal, uh, Balassi, uh, Rosier makes a pass to Balassi. Balassi passes that into the box, and Viatu uh, gathers and, and scores the goal. Um, but there is a potential Balassi offside call um, just leading up to the goal. Uh, I'll ask the both of you this question. Was Balassi offside in your opinion? Christian, I'll start off with you first. I don't know how he's not offside. <laughs> yeah, me too. What am I missing here? <laughs> yeah. I, I was I was asking myself the same question. Uh, I thought for sure he was offside. Uh, Steph, what about you? I don't think he was. I mean, uh, the the, uh, the replay and after the game, which was final, they reviewed it like for, for uh, a while. For a few minutes after the game, and uh, the uh, different angles and in- images they introduced, and that's what they see at the time. The VAR, uh, it showed him uh, actually online with the defender. Sometimes what we see at home, it's not what they see at the VAR. They have a lot more cameras with a lot more different angles, and now they sure. have a, a, a tape measure. And he was actually on site by a few centimeters because of, I think it was the the right foot of the defender. That's what they go by. It's like the last, uh, um, the last uh, foot or hand or, or, or arm of the defender player. And, and uh, he showed he was actually on, not offside. Fair. That, that is a good point too. I only see the one, the one angle on, on the goal. So, uh, fair enough. Because yeah, um, you, you have to remember, he has to. The offside is from when he gets the ball, so it's the departure of the ball from whoever is passing the ball to him. Yeah. So, so when if you if you guys have time, you know, I think it's on the record or Sport TV for sure in in, in their Twitter account. Um, it, they show it slowly when the guy passes the ball to him. And at that sp- specific time, you see both things happening at the same time. He's not offside. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah, I'm looking at it now. It's tough, man. Tough call. Anyways, um, let's see, do I have any more questions? Oh, the last question um, before asking you guys who the man of the match was. Um, we've seen Vieto squander a few chances this game, especially towards the end. Um, should Vieto have scored a hat trick? What do you guys think? Easily, yeah. Eas- easily, easily. It's uh, you could have uh, even uh, scored scored a poker, but uh, yeah. you know it is what it is. I'll take the two goals he scored, um, but I think uh, you know I think his confidence is uh, is getting better and stronger, and and that's good. That's a good thing, and we need that from him, uh, and, and actually from a few more players like Camacho. You, you could have scored, and he. He, he hit the ball so hard and he totally missed the target. But, you know, the, if, you want, if you're a professional player, you have to be cool to, to be able to score. And so far, our players at Sporting, you can feel the anxiety. Uh, they're afraid of making mistakes. But Vieto is, you know, it's coming, it's coming a long way because at Atletico Madrid, I think he only scored one goal in a many, a many months for several months. So now he's, he's. This is his fifth goal, I believe, with the Sporting. Yeah, uh, he's, he's scored five times. So, you know, I think his beginning is his momentum and confidence, which is good. But I want also that from Gise, from from uh, Luis Flip and uh, and Bolasi, Camacho, Plato, and that's and that's the coach that has to you know work with them and and it's routines and in uh, in practice and all that stuff. So. So, yeah, we'll see. Agreed. Uh, and, Steph, I'll ask you this question. Uh, we, we got it uh, last week from, I believe, Anthony Menez. If I'm wrong, I apologize. He's in um, Portugal. 
Yeah, he is in Portugal. I've seen him today. <laughs> yeah. He went to see the Seleção today. Or, no, oh. not today. Uh, against um, Lithuania. Lucky, and got him. lucky bastard, man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Anyways, last week he asked um, if, if Vietu's been living up to the transfer fee. Um, again, just to remind everybody, $7.5 million for 50% of his pass. No denying that Vieto is definitely one of our better players. Maybe third to, to Bruno Fernandes and Acuna. Uh, but what's your opinion on that stuff? Do you think he's been living up to the, to the transfer fee or he has a little bit more to go to prove his worth? I, I mean, uh, you know, we, need, we need to see a little bit more. I mean, if we pass the, the group stage of uh, the uh, Liga Europa, then we'll s- it's going to become more difficult depending on the uh, Surteu. And then that's when we're going to need him uh, against tough teams. Uh, Rosenberg was not a tough team. Let's, let's be real. Uh, they were easy. Um, so we'll see Thursday. So we need him to show up for the big games as well. Not only against uh, Bulnins and stuff like that. I want to see him play and make a difference when we play Porto, Benfica. Sure. We'll play PSV Eindhoven, which is a decent team from the Netherlands. So, so far, so good. Um, is he a striker with ponta de lança de raiz? No, he's not. He's more of a winger. Am I right? I agree um, with you. Yeah. yeah, like, you could fit on a number nine position behind the forward. Uh, but, you know, we were expecting him to score some goals. But, you know, is we scored on strikers. Luis Felipe is not good enough. We need another one. And, uh, yeah, but so far, so good. So, But I'm expecting to see more from him, yes. Agreed. Agreed. Um, sort of my last question on this game, I guess, as well. Um, but it's more of an overall uh, for the season so far. We had an attendance to, uh, at Bilinich of 27,000. 27,100, to be more specific. Um it's been very common for us to be in the 20s, like the 20,000s in terms of attendance. Uh, I'll ask both of you this question, but Christian, I'll pass this one off to you first. Um, our low attendance, what do you put that down to? Is it the direção? Is it the, the way the team's been playing? Um, is, it, is it the clocks and, and maybe, you know, you know, the whole thing that's been going on with them? Um, are we maybe not even as good as fans as, as, as we claim to be, seeing as... We'll, we'll probably only be around when we're winning and not when we're losing. Um, what do you put the low attendance down to? Um, so, I mean, it's possible that some of the no- lack of attendance uh, recently is, like, clock members not being there. I mean, that is, like, I don't know, uh, fifth of the stadium, right? Pretty, kind of, basically, yeah. like, that side. Maybe, maybe slightly less. Um, but... I just think that in general, it's just lack of performance. Uh, you know, people people just don't want don't have the money, don't want to take the time to to go to the stadium, except for it's poor hours to go see. You know, fourth place Sporting take on a eleventh place Bullness. I mean, it's just not it is not exciting. And it's not cheap to go either. So I think a lot of people just are just flaking out on the team pretty much. Fair enough. And what about you, Steph? <laughs> Well, it's, it's a combination of uh, everything that you just mentioned at the beginning of the question, plus politics, plus uh, the fans, uh, a good portion of the fans, I'm not going to say all of them, because the uh, Verandas did win with 75%. Um, um, don't trust him. Don't trust this administration. They, they don't see him as a leader. So our club is very divided. With uh, with the uh, prior administration, with uh, BDC, the average I believe was forty two thousand per game, uh, forty two sometimes thirty eight, but it, it didn't drop below the thirty eight. We have one of the best attendance in the Liga Nos, uh, considering the uh, size of the stadium, of course. Um, so it's not just just like Chris said, the team being uh, bad as, as as far as performance, we've been terrible actually. Uh, but it's also because of all the politics going on. The way he 
he attacked the, the clocks or he's trying to fix the clocks. I don't know what, he, what he's trying to do, but teach them a lesson, I guess. Um, it's not the way to do it. Um, you know me. I'm not okay with clocks to, that goes into a statement insulting anyone. I'm not a, f- a big fan of that. Or violence. I'm not a big fan of that either. Do we need the clocks? Yeah, we do need the clocks. But I think maybe they need a different approach. Maybe they need to debate it. They need to have maybe a a a, a meeting like, uh, how, how do you say in English? Un debat public. Uh, mm. A debate in a pavilion in a specific date, you know, maybe for a whole weekend talking about it. How can we have a more healthy, uh, safe environment, including our clocks in the, the 21st century? Um, but it's not only the sporting clocks that's that's across our nation, which we still they still like very primitive. Uh, so uh, they need to, you know, evolve and. It, it doesn't mean that they need to end the clocks. Th- that's not good. And as we see, the stadium is, is empty. 20,000 or 23,000 spectators, José Alvalade, it's nothing. The capacity of, of our stadium, what is it, 52,000, I believe, about, about that. Um, I think so, yeah. So it's like one third of the state. 52? Yeah. It, yeah. So it's it's bad. It's really bad. And, and, um, I agree that this administration, they want fair and square and they should stay the full term of three years. But I seriously believe that he won't win the next term, which will be a couple of years from now. Um, but he needs to, to stick with what he said at the beginning of his agenda, which he already messed up a few times. He said he wouldn't get rid of uh, any modalidades and he killed the uh, cyclismo. And then he said he wouldn't kick out uh, Bruno Carvalho's socio, and he did it. We have a video of him saying he wouldn't. Yeah. And now he said, uh, need a sport, we need. He's not, he's not doing that. So his, uh, his logo was Unido Sporting, Todos Unidos, or whatever the fuck it was. He's doing completely the opposite. Instead, instead of brainstorming and talking to administration, the people he trusts the most, I think he's listening to the wrong people. The the same old people that that messed up sporting and they just want to take advantage of sporting for their own financial gain, or publicity, uh, he's falling into their trap. And uh, until he doesn't find a way to really uh, gather together all sporting geeses, then we're going to have this kind of uh, 20 to 22,000 spectators in our stadium. and. It, it, it begins with him. It begins from the top. Uh, you have to lead by example. And him being so aggressive and trying to demolish and and take away the uh, the space from Juventus de Unina. He's trying to really hard. I mean, it's unbelievable how hard he's trying to kick them out of their, you know, sets. It's unbelievable. I've never seen such a thing against France. Um, he, should, he should use another approach. And, uh, you know, to wrap it up, he's doing a terrible job managing that. And uh, he's like Trump in the United States, really. Yeah. Yeah, and his, um, him always coming out in the media or him always going to these galas talking shit about the clock uh, or just sparking fans in general uh, doesn't actually help the situation. No. Uh, so well said, stuff. Um, all right, and I think we'll, we'll be unanimous in this, but I'll ask anyways. What's your guys' man of the match? Uh, Christian, I'll start off with you. Uh, man of the match, uh, it, 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 it's probably either Bruno Fernandes or Vieta. I mean, Vieta scored the two goals, but I mean, Bruno Fernandes was also pretty uh, contributing to most of the, the offense that was occurring. Fair enough. And, and how about you, Steph? I'll give it to Camacho. He came in the middle of a pile of shit, and and he was able to um, spark it up and make the team play. So I'll give it to Camacho. Yeah, uh, Camacho definitely changed up the the way he played. I'll give it to Viato nonetheless. You know, two goals. Uh, I thought he played very well. Um, oh, and one thing I forgot to mention that I kind of wanted to mention before we move on. 
Um, I did not like. We were winning one nothing at the time. Kamashu gets a ball, um, sort of not towards an empty net, but he was clear. He had a clear shot on goal, and he skies it. Yeah. Now I un- and and the, his teammates around them clearly upset, like throwing their hands up, like. I don't know if they were shouting or not, but but um, what I wanted to say was doing these things, especially with a young player, it, it, it's not healthy for the team and for the player, especially seeing, and Steph mentioned this earlier, seeing as the, this whole te- this team as a whole has a sort of anxiety when it comes to putting the ball at the, uh, at the back of the net. It won't help, especially when you're doing that to a 19-year-old just coming into the team, trying to find his feet. You know, playing 60 minutes for the first time uh, since preseason. So uh, uh, that attitude from the team, Bruno Fernandes included, I, I, I did not like one bit. Um, and I, I wanted when I seen that, I wanted to mention that on the pod. So, anyways, um, before moving on to move the lead on, do you guys want to have a quick? I know we should have talked about this before recording. Do you guys want to have a quick uh, talk about the Celeste Sound, um, seeing as we qualified for Euro 2020 today? I'll take two minutes. Uh, the uh, yeah. against uh, Lit- uh, Lithuania, we played well. We in a good pitch, and you know why I'm saying that. Uh, we scored six goals. We dominated the game from the start to, to, to the end, and a hat trick from Cristiano Ronaldo making it 98. Awesome game. Nothing to say. Then we moved on to today's game, which was at nine o'clock in the morning here in the U.S. Uh, one of the most shittiest games I've ever seen Slesson played. But, you know, let's be real. They, they didn't unlearn what they know from uh, from three days ago. It's the, the field, the pitch. I'm amazed at Luxembourg, which had nothing to gain in picking such a bad stadium in such bad conditions. Uh, I don't know why they would pick that specific stadium. They have so many, so many more better in better condition. Uh, it looked like... But um, but uh, seriously, it was, and that affected our team because our team is more skillful, and uh, the field was slowing down the, uh, the soccer ball tremendously, and we won two nothing. But that pitch was was perfect for an average team like Luxembourg, because all they did they put uh, two pinets as uh, forwards. And cross the ball to them and hope for the best to put the ball away in the net. And they almost succeeded a couple of times. So shame on Luxembourg for picking such a, a shitty stadium. The shitty pitch uh, didn't. It's not good for, for a country that's the, developing the, the, the soccer team and national team to trying to get a little bit of leverage or advantage by picking such a shitty stadium. That That's the only conclusion. I could come up with why would they pick such such because the commentators on RTP1 they kept on saying they have much better te- uh, um, stadiums with better pitches uh, and uh, you, you you could just see that that pitch is, wasn't made to Pescuaro Camp the water was was staying on the pitch and it made it it was more terra do que you could see it you could see it yeah, yeah it became lama you know, mud all over the fucking place. So, but, you know, we deserved it anyway. We were one of the best teams of the group. And uh, we deserved to move on. But it wouldn't, be, it wouldn't have been the end of the world if we lost. It would have been really upsetting. But we still had a playoff to play because we won the Nations Cup. But we didn't have to use that wild card, which is good. Yeah. And uh, and Serbia also ended up tying with Ukraine, too. So I, I know at the end, too, too. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Uh, Christian, what about you, dude? Yeah, I mean, on, uh, I guess Thursday it was. That, I mean, Lithuania is just not on the same level as us. And that was just, it was fun to watch. It was just, like, endless waves of attacks and shots. So, yeah, that was fun. And then today, uh, it was ugly. Like Steph said, the field sucked. They played some anti jogu uh, I mean, I think that they probably did that just because they wanted to get a result. I know it didn't help matter for their own qualification, but, like, I don't know. Ronaldo's coming, playing, like, a top team in the world, defending champion. Like, 
teams like that don't get that many opportunities, so it, you know it's like a chance for them to kind of you know make their mark. Make, you know, their head the headline is like, like uh, you know Luxembourg takes down Portugal and they don't qualify. You know, that's a, that's pretty crazy. So um, I think that's probably why they were doing that, hosting a game in their worst stadium. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I'm just yeah, glad that we got the result. Bruno Fernandes scored, our guy. Um, and, Great goal uh, yeah. too. End of the Euro, yeah. 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 Last thing on Portugal. What what are what do you guys think our chances are of uh, reconquering Europe? I think I think if we if we have uh, uh, just a couple more things about that game, Ronaldo did score again, so making it 99. Yeah, and uh, I would have made one change uh, one change instead of Andres Silva. For that game with that pitch, I would have put Gonzalo Paciencia. He's uh, stronger. Mm-hmm. That would have been a perfect game for him. Um, but uh, our chances in the in the uh, Euro 2020, uh, it's like everybody else. I mean, we, there's a bunch of good teams. We our team is they have the best world class players playing the best teams in the world. So you know, I'll I'll give uh, Portugal. You know, I think we have a good shot of winning. The uh, Euro, but we all know that we have to be consistent and we have to be sometimes patient and sometimes we're going to have to play ugly. That's how we won the last Euro, Euro Bill in France yeah. in uh, 2016. Uh, but yeah, we, we have a great coaching staff. I like Fernando Santos. Some people don't like him, but so far he's giving his results. So we've been to the Bill, Mundial Little Bill. We won the Little Bill. So sometimes people want too much from him. But we're winning, god damn it. So I don't know what else they want from this guy. Every time we, we change too much, the team goes to shit. So leave it alone. Leave it the way it is. And let's see what kind of a, a group we, we end up. We know from the get go that we're going to have a tough opponent because we're not groups, Kibitzis and Seri, because we didn't win the group. Um, so, but with that said, you know, we have our chances. And uh, as long as our players are healthy, uh, then I think Portugal has a word to say. Agreed. How about you, Christian? I think we've got a chance, to be honest. Uh, um, you know, I, to, to be honest, I probably think we have more of a ch- I feel like we have more of a chance going into this one than I felt like we had, than at the time I felt like we had going into 2016. I don't know if you guys feel that way at all, but 100%. that's, that's kind of where I'm at. So, I mean, that's, that's, a, I guess, a pretty decent place to be, you know? Yeah, 100%. Um, all right, Steph. Uh, pass it off to you, dude. Uh, what happened in the world of Sporting this week for our Moodle Dodge? Okay, so a lot of things happen, a lot of exciting stuff. So, as you guys know, I'm a huge fan of, a huge fan of handball. Handball yeah. has been just amazing. Uh, the, the international game we had uh, in the middle of the week against Presov of Thailand, we won 37-22. The biggest win ever in the Champions League of handball. We won by 15 goals. That was an amazing performance by our team. Then this weekend we played against Football Club Porto no Dragão. Uh, the first half, uh, Porto, uh, they, they started very strong. They had six, six goals lead on us. Uh, before the, uh, the halftime, we reduced it to half of it, to three points. So it was 16-13. And then at the beginning of the second half, we came out really strong. We were up by two goals, and then it was just an emotional uh, game. Uh, goal para aqui, goal para lá, empate aqui, empate lá. Uh, great performance by both teams. Uh, less than a minute, we had the ball. Uh, our coach, Antti, called for a, a, a timeout. And... Uh, <clears throat> After the timeout, I thought we were going to score. We didn't. We kind of gave the ball away in a very uh, childish way. Porto had the ball. They had 27 seconds left. They called a timeout to work out a, a play. Uh, but our defense uh, over, overcame football called Porto, and the game ended up 29-29. So great game against two great teams, 
Both teams are doing well in the Champions League as well. And uh, both teams are leaders in the, in the Portuguese league um, with the same points. Sporting is betting in the goal average. Uh, then after that, we, uh, we had our ladies rugby team uh, win the Iberian Cup against Crat da Coruña. 16-12 in Spain. That was in Spain. So for the second year in a row, we, we won that trophy, which is uh, another international trophy for our museum. Um, in the uh, Portuguese Cup, the rugby team again won against uh, Sporting Lisboa Benfica, 28-5. to It's a well-known fact that we have a better team than uh, Benfica in rugby. So congrats to our ladies in rugby. They just did amazing. One international cup and one Portuguese cup, both going to the museum. Great. Then uh, our men's team in volleyball, we uh, played Castel Maia and we won three nothing. Uh, so we still have all victories, seven games, seven victories. Great, great performance by them. Um, then the uh, big accomplishment of this weekend was our judo team. Uh, we won against the Russian team, um, so making it the 37th international uh, title for our club, Sporting Club Portugal. So congratulations to to our judo team. What a performance uh, in Odi Velas. Uh, the pavilion was completely full and well-deserved for, for those champions. The second year in a row, it's just an amazing feeling, and congrats to them. Uh, Ok in Petings, we won in France against Dina Gervais, 2-1. Tough game. Uh, we're not expecting it to be so tough, uh, but we did win. So we're in the first place of the group. Uh, so congrats to them. In um, basketball, we won against, uh, against a team from uh, close to my hometown, Zgeira. It's They always a very difficult team, but Sporting did well enough to win against them. So we remain in uh, in second place. First place it's Football Club Port, and then second place it's Sporting together with uh, Sporting Lisboa e Benfica. Um, then Okim Patins they played uh, uh, Saint Juanes uh, a day ago, and we won eleven uh, two. So that was our ladies. They did an awesome performance. Uh, congrats to them. Futsal uh, we won. We won 7-2 uh, before going to Russia. I think the team already left to play the elite uh, round. Uh, so good luck to our team. Uh, then volleyball ladies, we lost at home against Club Kairos dos Açores, 3-1. They have a pretty good team. Um, and then uh, our ladies in futsal, they lost against Sportanos Bovifica. We all know that uh, they have a better team than we do. Uh, we lost three nothing. They half of their team is part of the national team of Portugal, so we've got better quality players, but we still not a match, good match for, for Benfica. And last but not least, our ladies in uh, in uh, in uh, football and soccer, they won eight nothing against Kadima. You uh, you are Kadima, so we're still in uh, in uh, second place behind uh, uh, Benfica. And uh, that's all I have for the modalidades. Perfect. Uh, Steph, I actually have a quick question for you and Christian. Obviously, step in if you want. Um, what are your thoughts on the, um, the girl we just signed for, for futsal? Uh, the one that came from Befica, the one that apparently has a 1904 tattoo on her. Uh, I know a few sports uses that were, were very upset and very vocal on Twitter. What were your thoughts? Um, I think I think it's more because of the tattoo, uh, more than anything else. We we have to keep things into perspective. Uh, if we go back in time, we had João Vieira Pinto, Benfica, one hundred percent. We had Jean Pacheco, Portista, uh, Souza, Antonio Souza, uh, Portista. Uh, we had uh, you know several players that belong to other clubs, and we accepted them because of their quality. And what they could give us, as far as a, a good professional, uh, in this case, we're talking about a futsal uh, lady. Um, so she comes to play 
to give us a more leverage against Benfica, because Benfica is the three campeão Portugal. So we try to compete against them. So we try to get better quality play. If she's coming to our team to give us an advantage and and so we could be better, why not? Uh, if she's if she's Benfica, she's Benfica. I mean. There's nothing we can do about that. But if she plays her heart, she plays 100%, and she's a professional uh, all the time, I have nothing to say against that. We've had so many Benfica players playing our team and Portista players playing our team, and we always welcomed them because they were true professionals playing for our team. So I'm not against her playing our team. The Tattoo 1904, I mean, that that's... Let's say if uh, João Matos... One day goes to Benfica. I don't think he will. He's full of tattoos of Sporting as well. Yeah. You know, Cardinal is the port. Yeah, you know that. that. Yeah, o Cardinal is the football club port. How come we're not on top of him? I, we accept Cardinal, but not her, because of a tattoo. When she did the tattoo, she was not at Sporting. You know what yeah. I mean? So exactly. there's nothing we can say. You know, maybe now she regrets it. But there's nothing she can do. She could remove the tattoo, but that's that's a bit extreme to demand that from her. Yeah. Um, so I think it's I think we I think some fans have just been ridiculous and being too harsh on her. They should just let it go. If she's if she's gonna score goals and, and be a true professional and make the difference for our team. Well so today <laughs> it wasn't the case. We still lost three nothing. Um well, I would let it go and let her let it be part of the team because all they're gonna do is give her more anxiety and then she won't perform well, she won't feel welcome. And for what? We're being hypocrites because we have uh, players in our team as we speak now. And if we dive into uh, the uh, males team, I'm pretty sure we'll find there's some beefy kisses and maybe portistas. You know, they're not saying it as sumidos, but if we dig a little bit, maybe we will find some. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. I a hundred percent agree with you. I think there was also uh, some some point of a contention because she, at the time when she was playing for Befica, she was talking shit about Sporting. But to that I say, she's defending the team she's playing for. So no harm, no foul, I think. As so long as she can still defend Sporting now that she's with us, fuck it. You know what I mean? So I'm with you, Steph, a hundred percent. All right. Let's go off to, let's just preview quickly the next two games. Um, it's actually only coming in 10 days, uh, but it will be in Avalade again against PSV, an important game for Europa League. Christian, what are your thoughts on this game, and, and how do you think it'll finish? Yeah, so obviously it's the biggest Europa League game so far. Um, not necessarily a situation where the Sporting has to win, but they pretty much have to win. Uh, they, we already lost to this team once, so obviously we know, um, you know it's a pretty good side. I um, don't really know what to expect in terms of the result. Uh, I haven't really had a chance to dive into PSV's form recently. Uh, um, but, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm certainly excited about it. It's a European game that means a lot. Um, you know, if we crash out of Europa League, that is another competition down. Um, you know, Tasa of the Liga will be deciding our future in that in the next couple of weeks here. We play the remaining two games, but there's a very real chance that We'll be knocked out of that. So, <clears throat> I mean, that pretty much just leaves the, the the league itself, which you could say what you want about it, but I don't think there's much to play for there other than uh, positioning. And, um, you know, uh, I think that, you know, without the Europa League, then this this, this season gets a little bland to me. Um, so a uh, European run would be, uh, would be awesome. So I, I'm excited. I hope that they play well. Playing at home, hopefully – um, there's more than 22,000 people there to cheer them on, and I think that they will get the result 2 1. Yeah, uh, I just quickly looked up their form. PSV actually haven't won since October the 6th. Uh, they lost to Utrecht, they tied to Lask, lost to Alkmaar. They got slapped by Alkmaar. Uh, got slapped by against, Lask. Yeah, got slapped by Lask. Last game was against Willem. They lost 2 1. And they Jesus. did say, yeah. And they do play, uh, they also tied against Sparta, Rot- Rotterdam, which I believe are near relegation, if I'm not mistaken. And then they play four games before, um, they play on the 24th at home against Her, Her- I, can't, I can never pronounce them, Hernevin, and shit like that. 
um, which are a decent Dutch team. So, yeah, uh, not in great form. Steph, uh, what are your predictions on this game? Um, I mean, we you, you know how it is. I mean, I'm expecting to be a great game that Sporting plays well. We're finally an awesome team. You know, that's what I want. That's what I want to see. You know, you know. I mean, that's what I'm hoping for. I'm hoping for a great game. Like I could say, wow, amazing. Is it going to happen? Most likely not. <laughs> you know. <laughs> 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 But if we win, if we win, like Chris said, two one, todos cagados, todos burrados, I guess I'll take it. One hundred percent take it. But the thing is, it's a group stage. We move on to what to to the uh, to round of 30, 32, I believe, because yep. that's it's a little bit more than the Champions League. They go into the sixteen, and we go to the round of thirty two because we still get the third places from the Champions League. So we go to the round of thirty two. If we get a so so opponent. There we go again. You know what I mean? So, I hope we win. Uh, PSV is not doing well as well, like you said. Uh, Tasa de Liga, I don't think we... We have uh, Rio Ave and Porto Imanes with four points. They have one win, one tie. We have we only play one game. Next game will be against Il Vicente on the, the 4th of December. And then we'll play against Porto Imanes on the 21st of December. So... Rio Ave, all they have to do is basically win the last game against Sil Vicente. And they, they end. Uh, and Porto Mourens, you know, they always give us a hard time as well. So I have I have no confidence in the Tasa da Liga. Hopefully we'll be able to be a better team in the Tasa da Liga. But coming back to Liga Europa, I hope we win at home. Because we need this win. If we win, that's it. We move on from the yeah. group stage. And you know, a victory. How much money is it? Is it five hundred thousand dollars? I believe. It's also financially uh, a good thing. So, it's something like that. Something like yeah, that. I can't remember the exact. Yeah. I know it's. I know it's much less than uh, the Champions League, but it's better yeah. than it used to be. So yeah. I, it might be a little bit higher. So you know. And also, you know, we're we we've officially passed Russia, so it's just adding on. Yes. Yes. Hopefully, yes. widening the continue to widen the gap. Yes, that. indeed, that's very important because if we move on to the group stage, we get bonus points. Yep, that's true too. And uh, you know, anything to help ourselves qualify for Europe and uh, avoid the uh, European Conference League is welcome. Yes, and <laughs> and, and I did. So you guys, all, I did listen to your podcast to our podcast that you guys did last time. This ranking that we're doing the, the, this year, 2019, 2020, it's for 2021 and 2022. So it's not, uh, so it's yep. like two years in the future? Yes. That's fucked so, up. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so um, meaning that if we keep the sixth, pl- uh, sixth place from Steel from Russia, we'll have two of our teams, the first and the second, going directly to the Champions League, and the third one, going to a playoff, and we have an additional three teams going to League Europa, total of six teams altogether. True. Which we need it, because we need yeah. the money. The Champions League is uh, money, money. Yeah, exactly. Uh, especially saying that another report, as we mentioned before the podcast, comes out saying that uh, we owe 50 million or whatever it is. We need 65 million <laughs> before January. Yeah. Isn't that a fucking amazing that everybody knows about our finances? I don't get it. Isn't it always amazing, too, that ever since this administration has come in, that all of a sudden there's deadlines and we owe millions upon millions? It's just... Um, months away. I don't know. I don't know. Can you boof? There's a leak. This is worse than the, the White House. Holy shit. Yeah, for real. You know? yeah. I mean, seriously. For I real. mean, there's always someone telling Uzogo record of all of what's going on in our, internally, what's going on. What the fuck? How would they know exactly 65 million, not exactly that amount? What the fuck? How, you have a calculator on you? You know? It's like, I don't get it. You know, what about Port Ubefica? <laughs> They owe money too. Yeah, Benfica owe a lot of money, but but you know, but it, and kudos to Porto Benfica, they keep yeah, it exactly. within the club. Well, that's what I'm saying. You know, yeah. we, we all know that they owe money, 
but they able to contain it. We're not we're not able to contain it, and that's embarrassing. It's totally totally embarrassing. And I would start with the uh, with the vice presidents. If I if I was Verandes, I would say, you know what? We have too many vice presidents. You you and you 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 fired. Fuck you. We'll save yeah. money with your salary. And then I will go down the line and see how many dirigents we it we just have too many. Every time I see someone taking a picture next to a player, é o vogal, é o dirigente, é o vice-presidente, é foda-se. I've never yeah. seen a club with so many people, with so many living at the uh, Aculta de Sporting. I, I hope Sporting gives me a job too. Well. <laughs> uh, of course. Maybe they're English correspondents. What the hell? It's, it, I've never seen you know, a club with so many dirigents. It's a common thing in Portugal. It's not only Sporting, but fuck, man. That's where you save the money. Cut, yeah. cut, cut, cut the, uh, the, the heavy weight, the, the dead weight in this case. The, it's all dead weight. They all have BMWs and fucking uh, Range Rovers and shit. I mean, you look at their cars. They're, not, they're making good money. Exactly. Put e já houve o um, um aumento da salário também. Ah, então, tinha que ser. Eu mas, you know, but, we owe 65 million in January, mas, you know, o aumento de salário é muito mais importante. Oh. Um, I gotta tell you, Sporting has to be structured the whole or the organizational chart they have going on, because I just see too many taxes. Yeah. Sim, sim, sim. Yep. Agreed. Anyways. That was the end of our um, another podcast, podcast number 58. I was going to ask you guys what, what you thought of uh, maybe the preview of uh, Gil Vicente, but that's in like 15 days, so it'd be tough to, uh, tough to do. So anyways, thank you guys for listening. Steph, Christian, thank you as always for joining. Uh, follow us at, on Twitter at Spartan160 underscore EN. Follow us on Instagram at Spartan160 EN. Um, we still have merch on Spreadshirt for any for anyone interested. Just search up Sparking 160 Yen or Sparking 160 and you'll find it. Uh, YouTube, of course, is Sparking 160 Yen. Um, and yeah, thank you everybody for listening. And uh, ciao. Viva Sparking. Viva.